Hey guys, this is a continuation of several videos that I've already put out relating to auxiliary batteries. What I'm going to try to do in this video is to go into a little more detail on the wiring harnesses and how to connect these to your XP. Even though I've shown that in previous videos, I feel like I may have left out a few little steps or they weren't quite that clear. But anyway, since then, I've changed my thinking a little bit and will show you a few changes from my previous videos. Okay, let me start out with the standard XP. This harness wire right here is for the standard XP. One of the changes that I've done, I've started putting an XT90S connector in lieu of the Dean's T-plug connector at the location where the, where the auxiliary battery harness connects into the connector that leads to the standard bike connection panel. And the reason I did this, and it goes in like so, and the reason that I did this is that this particular plug has a anti-spark feature to it. So you won't get a spark when you connect this into your battery lead. As in my previous videos, I, have an, I did an auxiliary battery box so I could put a standard XP battery in that box and use it as my auxiliary battery. In that box, I have a quick connect at the bottom that this plugs into. So this is all that I would actually use with that particular box because that box has a fuse in it and also you can take your auxiliary battery, since it's an XP battery, it's got the key and everything, you can cut it on and off. So this is really all you would need for that auxiliary battery box. Now since then I've done some more experimenting. I'm leaning now towards the 20 amp battery that you can put into your rack bag and that's where this lead right here comes into and it's mainly for my bag only if you were doing it for yourself and did not want to use the auxiliary box like I've got you really wouldn't need this or at least you wouldn't need you could incorporate this wire, this scheme into this wire so in other words you would gun come in here and you'd have a switch instead of having to connect it just go ahead and put a switch in this line and then you'd have a line like so and actually you don't would even need the connector I've got in here I've got this connector and you could just actually run right straight up wouldn't need actually a connector here you could have this as connected into here and technically you wouldn't need this connector here either you could take this and make this one solid wire without the connector. This is one solid wire leading up to your 20 amp hour auxiliary battery. So this would be for your standard XP. Now what I've got here is my connector for my wife's step through. And I made it longer and the reason for that is is because that frame's different. And I wanted to be able to run my wiring up and conceal it especially since she, her bike is white and mine is black. I wanted to conceal the wiring, so that's why it's longer. And you'll understand why once you see the video of how this is installed. And of course, this is a, uh, one of my old controllers, and that old controller plugs in to this t Dean's T connector right here, like so. And so you still need your Dean's connector for the controller, and you also need your Dean's connector for your 20 amp hour auxiliary battery. So that's where that end goes. And what I would do on my wife's bike, I've got this and then I would use another one of these to hook into her bike. But I've also made, on hers, I've also made it the same that I did on my mine, where I can use the auxiliary box that I made to hold a standard XP battery if I wanted to. This will be the most important step as far as hooking up an auxiliary battery to your electric XP. Make sure that you've got your polarity correct. If not, you can damage the controller or you can actually even cause a fire because if this is connected in with the polarity not correct and the two batteries are together, then you're gonna have a dead short and that can be a big problem. So before you ever hook up your bicycle and you have all your harnesses completed and everything, Go ahead and do this test to make sure that your polarity is correct. First of all, if you notice, these quick connects 
will not always be the same. Sometimes the male prong is, ne is positive, sometimes the male prong is negative, and vice versa with the female. It just, because see, when you connect them together, it reverses everything. So to keep your pluses together, that's a male, this is a female, this is a female, that's a male. So see, it's always good to mark what you're doing. Most of these wirings with these quick connects, not all of them, some, some of them don't have the white line. This white line should be associated with your positive lead. So always make sure that that white line lines up. And on your T-plug, kind of hard to see, this small, let me see if I can get it closer in here. The top of the T, the horizontal of the T, is the positive. And the leg, the vertical part of the T, is always the negative. So always remember that. Because these plugs also have a male and a female. And that has nothing to do with the polarity. As you see here, that's a male, that's a female. So see the T on one end is a female and the T on the other end is a male. So that's going to always switch every time you make a connection. So just make sure that you remember the top of the T, the horizontal, is positive and the vertical leg is the negative. That being said, we'll look at the auxiliary wire. This is the auxiliary battery wiring harness and the harness connects into the battery connection panel. For this video I have marked these more clearly so they're easy to see. That's your plus which is this prong and your minus which is this prong. And these wires are clearly marked with the red being the positive and the black being the negative. And the same thing here the red wire positive and there goes the top of your T. Now we, I'm going to take the extension. This is the auxiliary battery wiring extension and I'm going to plug it in. This will be at the rack and I'm going to plug these two together plus plus minus minus okay as you see this wiring does not have the white line on it anywhere so you have to be aware of that on these xt 90 s's if you look right here on each one of the plugs it'll have a minus and it'll have a plus so that's the way you keep track of how that's wired minus and a plus another way to keep track of it one with the square end is the plus one with the bevel end is the minus. Okay, what I'm going to do now, so this so we can see what's happening, I'm going to plug this into the battery. And also notice that when you've got it hooked to the battery, you always have a female connector on the battery. And the reason for that is, is so that that hot connection is not exposed. Because right now that's a hot connection. And if anything would hit those two prongs and, and connect them together, it would short out this battery. So that's why these are always a female. The same thing here. Once this is in the bike, this becomes hot. So this is a hot side. The hot side will always be the female when you're using these teeth plugs. So just remember that. So now I'll connect the Dean's teeth plug plus plus minus minus. So all of that is connected properly. I've got my multimedia set on 200 volts. So first thing I'm going to do is this is my that's my own off switch. Right now it's an off position. So I shouldn't have any red positive black negative. I shouldn't have any voltage which I don't. As soon as I switch it on, and this will be connected, remember, to your control. Okay, there I go. Right now it has 50 volts. Different multimeters may read differently. But what this one does, if you don't see a minus sign, that means that your polarity is correct. Red being positive and black being negative. Now, if I reverse those, I'll get a negative. It'll still show 50 volts, but it'll be negative. So that's the way that I know that my polarity is correct, is when I put the red on the positive and the black on the negative. And now I'm getting a positive reading of 50 volts. I want to do the same thing here. This is the plus side, so, and this is the minus side. And the same thing there. Now I've got 50 volts. So it's my 50 volts. Check my switch out. Power's off. Put my switch back on. Power off. Now this XT90S plug has a spark arrestor in it. And that's probably why it's holding a little bit of charge. Because of the arrestor. And, and see, it's gradually going away. Turn it on. 50 Turn it off. And that's what it is. It's this plug right here. So always do that. That way you know that when you put it all together in your bike, you won't short out anything. Okay. Well, let's move on. Next, I'll continue on and we'll go to the bikes. And I'll start showing you how to connect them into the bikes. Hey, guys. Well, I'm ready to make my swap over of my harness. As you can see, I've already got my bike uh, folded up and I've got it broken out. I've got my battery removed. I'm ready to disconnect this panel and everything. So let me change the camera position. First remove the battery connection panel by removing the four machine screws. Behind the battery connection panel you will see a spaghetti of wires leading to the controller. Remove the heat shrink 
tape, in my case, normally electrical tape, from the Dean's T-plug. Then can disconnect the Dean's T-plug from the control. In my case, I have the wire leads from the auxiliary battery wiring harness that I previously installed attached directly to the battery connection panel. I will pull the old auxiliary battery wiring harness out of the tube tunnel and feed the new harness through the wiring hole on the bottom side of the tube. Now the XT90S plug is ready to connect to the new battery connection panel. Now I will slip one half inch diameter shrink tubing over the Dean's T plug and then connect the Dean's T plug connecting the battery connection panel to the control. Now I will apply heat to shrink the tubing once the connections are complete. I will arrange the controller wiring back into the bike tube. The battery connection panel needs to be secured back in place with the full machine screw. It's a good time to check the wiring continuity to see if all connections are proper. It is very important to make sure that the positive leads go to the positive connections and the negative leads go to the negative connection. Caution, an improper polarity connection will lead to damaging the controller and may cause a fire. At this point, auxiliary battery wiring harness needs to be routed from the bike tube wiring hole to the bike rear rack. Attach zip ties along the way to hold the harness in place. Once the harness is in place, it should be mostly concealed from view by the bike tubing and rack supports. Now this is the 20 amp hour battery that I recommend and talked about in one of my previous videos. It will fit nicely in most rear rack bags. Position the battery leads to the front of the bag. This will allow the bag to be fully zipped with the auxiliary battery wiring extension harness to connect to the battery. At the Dean's T-plug end of the auxiliary battery wiring extension harness, the T-plug and the fuse block will be concealed inside the rack bag. The Rock Bros bag that I have provides more than ample room for the auxiliary battery with about 60% of its space in the top compartment available for storage when unzippering the extension. Now I will install the rear rack bag. Once the rack bag is in place, I will connect the auxiliary battery wiring harness extension. First, connect the quick disconnect. Apply Velcro adhesive strips to one of the rack bag's front strap and also apply Velcro adhesive straps to the back of the on-off switch. This just makes it easier to switch the battery on and off. Then I connect the Dean's T-plug to auxiliary battery. Once connected, then zip the bag closed. Now we'll check out both batteries for power slide to the XP. I'll check the auxiliary battery first, power on, push and hold the controller M switch, LCD screen lights up. Then power off on the auxiliary battery on off switch. Next check the primary battery. Turn key to on position, push and hold the controller M switch, LCD screen lights up. Turn key to the off position. Next check both battery power to the system together. Auxiliary battery switch on. Turn primary battery key to the on position. Push and hold the controller M switch. LCD screen lit. Power off auxiliary battery. Power off primary battery. Caution. If you're going to run both batteries together at the same time, make sure that their voltage levels are the same. 
Again, I'll give a walk around of the auxiliary battery wiring harness routing and connection. This is a pic showing the routing of the auxiliary battery wiring harness and auxiliary battery harness extension. Easy peasy. Moving right along to the auxiliary battery wiring harness or the step through XP. Similar as before with the standard, remove the five screws holding the battery connection panel in place. Remove the battery connection panel. Notice this is stock with no modification. Remove the electrical tape around the Dean's T-plug and disconnect the connection panel T-plug from the controller's T-plug. Now go ahead and install the auxiliary battery wiring harness through the hole in the bottom of the bike tube. There is more breathing room in the controller compartment of the step through than that of the standard XP. So pull the controller and the wiring out enough to run the auxiliary battery wiring harness XT90S plug underneath the connection of the battery connection panel. Put the controller and wiring back into the bike tube. I decided for the step through that I would connect the XT90S plug to the battery connection panel wiring using snap wire connections. This is much simpler and requires no soldering. Now is the time for the reassembling. First plug the XT90S plugs together connecting the auxiliary battery wiring harness to the battery connection panel and pull the slack harness wire out. Next. Put shrink tubing over the Dean's T-plug. Then connect the Dean's T-plug together connecting the battery connection panel to the controller. Apply heat to the shrink tubing to seal the Dean's T-plug connection. Once all connections are done, range wiring is necessary to reinstall battery connection panel. Tighten the five machine screws to secure the panel in place. Now check the connections for proper polarity. As said before, it is critical that the polarity is correct or it will make for a bad day. We can now close the bike up and route the auxiliary battery wiring harness to the rear rack. This is similar to the routing of the standard XP, except the frame for the step through is different and requires a longer auxiliary battery wiring harness to run the harness in a way to conceal it. We will use zip ties to attach the harness wiring to the bike frame. The rack end of the harness has a quick disconnect plug, which has a dust slash protection cap that should be used when the harness is not connected to the auxiliary battery. When the harness is not in use, the end of the harness can be tucked under the rear rack bag. This picture shows the routing of the auxiliary battery wiring harness. That's a wrap. Well, this will conclude my video. I hope that y'all have learned a little bit, and I hope that this will be helpful. If not, I hope it was entertaining. So until next time, y'all have a nice day. Thank you for watching.